Well, doggone it, everybody, wasn't that a great intro? Welcome back to Making It Fun. I am Rob Appel, your host for this fabulous block of the month that I had really nothing to do with other than inviting my friend Charisma Horton to the what? set. What? We're friends now? Don't you love Yay! it? She was a designer in the first yeah. block, and now we're friends. What's yeah. what happens when they live on your couch for a year? A, a year? Well, well it's nine not months, been that six long. months. Are Where are we counting? at? Six months? Are you counting? Lost track. Oh my goodness, I thought I was a welcome guest here, and look what happened. Yes, so... She's a wonderful guest. We are playing. In case any of you are concerned about that, yes, this has uh, been a fantastic experience, and I'm sorry yes. I didn't interrupt you, my oh. lovely house guest yes. here. All right, so we are working on Fabulous, Fabulous! We are on month six, and we're calling this the Gene Block, and we will get to that later in the episode, but... We just want to kind of go through a little bit of what we're working on. And so we have this friendship star. Isn't this beautiful? So there are six of, well, there's 12 of them total, but six colorways. And this is a very important block, which is why it's named Jean. And we will, again, discuss that later. But you'll find when you see your diagram that there are specific colors in the cornerstones of these blocks, the four patches. And those are very important. So you do have to pay attention to that. So I'll just show you what each block looks like. And the orientation really that you need to pay the most attention to is this green block in the corner and this black one because they line up with other quilts, quilt blocks in the design. You want to show them over here? Yes. So um, th it's very important because as you see, these stars line up with the Alex blocks that we did in month two, and it creates that line of green. And then the black squares line up with the um, Joe, the quilt block of month, was that four? I believe so. Month four, it's been so long. It has so, been. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you that little bit of info because this is very important for yeah. the whole design process. Yeah, fantastic, great description. So here's a few more blocks, just so you can get a little bit of the fabulous color that we've been working with, the cocoa and the hash dot and the cotton couture because quite honestly, I mean couture, it says it all. Fabulous? Fabulous. <laughs> it says fabulous. So here we go, pink and orange and black. And we have some pink and purple and blue. So they are fabulous. I do love them. Do all love right. Them. So here we go. We are going to start with our units and we'll go through some of that with you. We have some big squares, little squares, medium squares. We have we have it all. It's just there. So here we go. We have our white and um, gold block here that we're going to start with our hourglass blocks. And we are going to cut all of these in on both diagonals. Can I get a ruler and a rotor? Of cutter? course. I'm over here watching your work and I forgot to get the rest of the supplies. <laughs> here we go. So we're going to cut these on both diagonals to make that quarter. What did we decide to call that? A quarter? I think we're calling this little unit a quarter square triangle because it's got a quarter of the, the square as the print and then the other two kind of are reading as the neutrals. I promised I would look that up. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we have our four little units here for the hourglass box and we're just going to go ahead I'm gonna cut two of these at a time here do you have like a maximum number of fabrics you normally stack well I usually do four I think okay. but I'm just for the ease of this I'm just gonna go ahead and do two. perfect and I think a lot of it's kind of based on personal strength um, maybe a sharp rotary cutter. What we don't want you to do is stack so many blocks or pieces of fabric that you're not cutting all the way through that base layer and then going back and trying to saw cut through it. Uh, and sometimes actually if you use a small cutter and a big thick stack, your uh, hardware on the cutter won't allow you to get all the way to the bottom one. So I usually do uh, no more than six pieces. Uh, four is a great number. And look how easy that is. Fabulous. Fabulous. So we are going to sew these quarter square units together. We'll need four of them to make our little uh, points on our friendship star. And we have to pay attention to the orientation of the color of where the, these go, right? So 
for gold, we need to have those on the right side. Mm -hmm. right? I confirm. Okay, great. <laughs> nice to have a sewing buddy. Right, and you'll see that in your pattern, which we're hoping you will get from your local quilt shop because this is an eight month series and we are doing a block of the month. That doesn't necessarily mean one block a month. It just means that you get um, one assignment a month, mm -hmm. right, Rob? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And the patterns actually come in a variety of different ways. Uh, some shops are like that, putting them out each month. Some are setting all at the same time. Some shops have kits available for you. Um, some are doing it uh, as a big pack. So there's a lot of ways that you can get involved and get engaged with us here. And if you've missed some of the earlier videos, of course, those are here at Making It Fun. And you can go back and watch them and pause them and keep up as, as you like. And now what, Rob? Well, I think we should uh, press those over, right? Yes, we have to press. Press them to that. the uh, dark side? Yes, Which will be gold side. in this one? Yes, mm -hmm. you absolutely. Got it. And oh. so just because, um, well, actually, in this case, for all of the star points, for all of the colors, which has not been the case for all of the blocks, we do sew them all to the right side. So that's easy to just go ahead and chain piece all of these at once. But we're going to sew them to a large black hash dot half square triangle. So then we're just going to lay those on top of this and we're just going to go ahead and sew those seams and we need four of those, right? Four. Correct. Yes. And guess what, Rob? I'm chain piecing. Oh my goodness! Are, are you shocked by that? Well, I'm going to say fabulous. Yes. Well, we learned in blo uh, block one, the Eleanor block, that I really like chain piecing. Yes. Thank you, thank you to Eleanor. Nothing wrong with a good old chain piece. Like many of our blocks, you can, if you are paying attention to your color orientation, do each step to increase the amount of parts and pieces that go through that chain at a time. So you could have done this with each of the colors. Just remember, four of the colors are going to lean to the, um, oh, this one, they're all on the right hand side. But like I said, in some of the other blocks, we'd have four going one way, four going the other. So, but Charisma's done a beautiful job with the instructions. That's why you're purchasing them. That's why you have them in front of you. That's why we have them in front of us. Units went. Fantastic. Hey, can you press those to, for me? Will do. Okay, we have those. And we know that um, if you follow the color diagram for the blocks, that our center is blue for those yellow points. So I'm just going to put that here. And the next thing that we're going to do, because those units are done, is we're going to work on the four patch units in this quilt. And so they are labeled specifically of how many cuts you need of each color. But in this case, we need black, pink, aqua, and green. So I'm just going to pull those strip sets out because Rob has already sewed those together for us. And you need a couple strips of the green and aqua because you use those more often in the um, color charting because as we pointed out in the beginning of the episode that we use green and black in every block because that's very pivotal for the layout of the design of the quilt. So how many do I need of each one Rob? You're gonna need a green square and a black, or I, let's call it a column for this moment because it's not really a square. So you're going to need a green combo, a black combo, and two blue combos for each of the blocks. Okay. Yep. So while you're on that one, you'll cut us up too. All right. How often that is it that you have a partner with sewing that can just relay all of this information to you and... <laughs> 
Oh, being that the case, I'm going to quickly trim off those dog ears like you've been teaching us too. Yay. Because a lot of our quilters uh, don't like that extra big part and piece that can sometimes hang over the block. So we're just gonna trim that out, either rotary cutter by hand or some scissors in there. All of your local long arm quilters will thank you for that. Just to keep myself in check, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay out these four patches because unlike Joe the quilt block, those were very random. We just had to make sure that the colors lined up. In this case, we really do have to pay attention to the orientation of color. So we already know that we have to have a pink in every one, right? Because mm -hmm. that um, does that. So that should be easy to remember, but I don't trust myself just as much as I don't trust Rob. So <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and sew these together. Here's the example of the one we're making right there. And those pink squares come in to then frame out the friendship star in the middle. Okay, so here we go. The, the rule was that we have to have the black and the green and the aqua on opposite mm -hmm. sides. Mm -hmm. So did we do that? Did I put it in the right orientation? We do. So if I rotate this green over there, or if I need to do this and drop it down to test, I have green here, I have black here, and the two aquas there. Right. Thank so, you, Rob. So, yeah. Thank so you. it is rotatable, right? Because it's the pink stays in the center, but we definitely need to have our aquas opposite our black and green. All right, thank you, Rob, for saving me. Time with the seam ripper. <laughs> it was the panic of not wanting to have my samples wrong when Charisma arrived to make sure that we were ready to entertain all of you with her fabulous project here. Well, that's okay, because I was about ready to compliment you, Charisma, because one of the things that the folks haven't noticed at home is we've really been practicing a lot of basic, basic foundation quilt blocks. We've done a lot of four patch. We've done a lot of half square triangles and a couple of flying geese you learned last month. This is the Friendship Star, which is a quarter square triangle, but we've used it big and small. Um, so the thing that I was... Well, actually, the thing I was first attracted to Charisma and her work was, was actually the photography that she provides on her patterns. There's a beautiful project I saw that was photographed on an antique uh, Plane. Like, 1930s aircraft, I believe it was. Yes. And it was just really wonderful. And it was both the use of the quilt on the old aircraft, but the colors matched. It was just everything was fantastic about it. And I said, I need to follow this lady. This is wonderful work. And then as I started looking into what she was really doing and looking at the way she experienced and played with color and these big, wonderful, bold, but super easy to construct projects and her patterns and her instructions are so good that I've really been enjoying. This is, um, I think, one of the, th the third projects I've worked on that you've created and I've really been enjoying. I think it's actually four. Probably the truth. Is it? Uh, probably. Yeah, it is. And you know the thing about that that is really um, awesome is that I feel like we don't need to reinvent the wheel all of the time, right? So mm -hmm. these tried and true blocks that we all know and love, they're basic things. It's so good to go back and refresh yourselves on things that you maybe have learned early on, but we're looking at them in a different way. So we can feel confident in the, the way that we are making and constructing the block, but we're just looking at it in different colors and arrangements. Mm -hmm. and some folks really like to play in quilt software or in graph paper, and it, it's often easier to, to start diagramming a project if you're using the real base units, you know, drawing a line through a piece of graph paper or something like that. It's a great starting point. And then as you start to add your colors, you can turn all of these pieces into all of this incredible design work. And, uh... and we're kind of close to the same age, and I learned how to do everything on graph paper. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, no shame in my game. Mm. I went back to graph paper out of the digital world because I had a need to be working with my hands more and I was starting to just have too much digital. So I did. I made my I made myself a paper journal and started carrying it around and using yeah. yeah, I really have been enjoying it. Yeah, I do that too. I think it's just kind of an artist thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I think that's why we all like to work with fiber so much, because we get the, the pleasure of touching it, but we also get the, the beauty and the joy of uh, designing with it and the colors coming together and, and that sense of completion. Like yes. physically building something here, something that you can give to somebody and watch the warmth and the, the, just the love you know, generate through that. It's really exciting. And that's one reason I love quilting, is because not only are we creating art, we are also making something useful. And if we go back into our roots of any generation, any country, anything, I've visited several countries, there's always some sort of quilting happening. And I just think that connects mm -hmm. us all in a bigger way. And I just feel comforted by that. I'm wondering if everyone at home is here in Winston wanting to get in on the, 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 the lecture now too. You know, you bring him into the video, you let him do a cameo, and now he's got nothing but stuff to say in the background over there. Well, he's like my bestie. <laughs> yeah, right? Charisma and Winston have had a lot of couch time. So speaking of friends. You're done over there. I know. So we got a friendship block. We're all connected. Right. I've made best friends with Winnie. So, I mean, isn't that a great way to introduce Jean into our segment here and talk about why we chose to name this block Jean? Absolutely. Do you want me to go first? Or do I you do want to go because first? you're the one who knows everybody and you have such great stories, Rob, and I am just <laughs> here to learn from you because you're so fabulous. Oh, well, with that story, we'll admit... Okay, Jean, Jean Wells, of course. Uh, is our uh, heritage, iconic, inspirational quilter. Those of you who do not know Jean Wells, um, quick story is about, I think it was like now 42, maybe 43 years ago, she hung a few quilts outside of her little quilt shop in Sisters, Oregon, and that turned into the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show, which is not only an incredible event for the quilters in the community, but this is an entire community event in a small town. So because Jean hung those few quilts out 40 plus years ago, this entire community now has a 13th month on their calendar for making money and finance in a small little town. So the entire community relies on the quilt show. But that's not why we chose, chose Jean. Sorry, it's gonna be a long story. But again. isn't that amazing how one person can make such an impact with just a small thing? I mean, yeah. It's quilting. It's something that we kind of take for granted, but just a simple little act and it changes so many people's lives. I think that that's just amazing. It really, really, really is. And so that's why I was suggested Jean on the Friendship Star because so many of the people you hear me talk about are folks that I have met and become dear friends with because I've been teaching at the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show for a lot of years and there's often about 35 teachers, about 1,500 students, and we all spend the week together. Most of us stay at one of three locations and so the camaraderie amongst all of us uh, it's just really incredible. So, Gene, thank you for uh, including me uh, at your show and uh, allowing me to meet some of these incredible designers and artists and quilt makers that I now get to call like dear personal friends. So That's amazing. Even I shared with my social media that I was going to be here today and several of my people said, oh, I took a class with Rob at the Sisters Quilt Show. So even your, your influence has spread upon, you know, so many people. So... Thank you, Rob. Well, thank you very much. And yeah. so I am not so influential, so I'm just going to plug myself right here in this <laughs> yeah. video to say well, dog on it. that if you want to find me, I'm not, you know, so fabulous, I guess. No, I'm really fabulous, fabulous. so I want you to fa follow me. And so you can find me at charismascorner.com. And so I just want to say thank you for my time here. Thank you for joining us and have fun. Fabulous. Fabulous. Awesome! <laughs>Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. <laughs> I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.